Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with classic guacamole. That's right, I'm going to be showing you how to make classic, traditional, totally authentic guacamole. Or at least my version. And I'm not sure exactly when you're going to watch this video, but today is National Guacamole Day. So I figured the timing was right. And I know it's not a real holiday, but neither is Valentine's Day. So we're not going to let that stop us. But anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And when you're making guacamole, there's basically two components. There's the avocados and there's everything else. And we're going to be starting with the everything else. So first up, we're going to slice some serrano peppers, which sort of look like small jalapeno, although they are significantly hotter. And yes, we are going to use the seeds and everything. Don't be scared, it's going to be fine. So we will slice those kind of thin all the way down to the stem. And I'm going to do three of those. And then once that's set, I'm going to take a nice big pinch of cilantro and give that a little bit of a chop. And by the way, please stop shaming your friends that don't like cilantro. It's not their fault, it's genetics. All right, for 10% of the public, cilantro actually tastes sort of like soap. So don't force them to eat it, don't make fun of them. Just be happy you're not one of them. But anyway, we're gonna give that cilantro a little chop and then pile it up on top of our peppers. And then we're also gonna take about a third of a cup of diced white onions and add those to the pile. And then we'll take our knife and give that a brief chopping. And what we're basically doing here is sort of mimicking if we prep these ingredients in a mocha hete which is sort of a large stone mortar in which guacamole is traditionally made. So to simulate that grinding process, what we're gonna do is give this a quick chop and then we'll sprinkle over some kosher salt or some other type of coarse salt. And then we're gonna proceed with what I call the old smear and chop. So using the flat of our knife, we're gonna kind of smear that against the cutting board, which again, we're trying to sort of simulate the grinding action in that mocha hete. And it's that coarseness of the salt that kind of helps the grinding process. And by grinding these ingredients, we're releasing much more flavor than if we just chop this stuff up and toss it in with our avocados. So this step takes a couple minutes, but it's totally worth it. So what we'll do is alternate between smearing and chopping until we've reached as fine a texture as we want. So some people are gonna leave this fairly coarse while others will prefer to grind this down to a fine paste. But anyway, that's up to you. You are the Jeff Spicoli of your guacamole. But I don't go that far. I like to go until it's right about here. And then what we'll do once that's done is simply set that aside and move on to prepping the avocados, which you probably know how to do, but I'm gonna show you anyway. But before we get to that, make sure you're buying perfect avocados. All right, we don't want them soft or hard. We want them firm, but yielding. And really what it should feel like when you press is sort of like modeling clay. That for me is the best description. And then what we'll do to prep these is go ahead and take off that little stem thing. I'll assume that's not the official name. And we'll take our knife and slice in right there until we feel the knife hit that seed, and then we'll simply continue cutting around. And usually we don't cut towards ourselves, but since that seed is stopping the knife, there's very little danger. And then once that's been cut all the way around, we'll simply twist the halves, and voila, we have separation. But we're not done, we have to remove the seed. And to do that, we will carefully but firmly tap that blade on the seed, embedding it about a sixteenth of an inch deep, and then all we have to do is give it a twist, and that seed will come right out. And please do not make the rookie mistake of trying to pull the seed off the knife. That is how you're gonna cut yourself. The safe way is put your fingers on the other side and just push it off. See that? So easy, so safe. And sure, if you see any weird brown things, you can go ahead and scrape those out. I think that was a seed sprouting, but I'm not sure. But anyway, once that's halved and pitted, all we have left to do is take a spoon and scoop out that beautiful green flesh into a bowl. And I should mention, unless you're the world's slowest avocado scooper, you don't have to toss this stuff in lime juice. It's not gonna turn brown in like five or 10 minutes. So some people like to squeeze in lemon or lime as they go. I see no need. So we'll go ahead and have pit and scoop our avocado. And I usually do four large Haas avocados, but these were a little small, so I did six. And once that's set, we can move into final production. So to our avocados, we're gonna go ahead and add some more freshly chopped cilantro, as well as our beautifully ground onion and serrano mixture. And then we're definitely gonna to need to add another generous sprinkling of salt. Avocados are very bland unless you add salt. And then last but not least, we'll squeeze in some fresh lime juice. Or if you're super weird, some lemon juice. And that's it. We'll go ahead and take a potato masher and mash this until it reaches our desired texture. Oh, and I should mention, a lot of people do like to throw in a handful of diced tomato into this, which I like, but my wife Michelle is not a big fan. So I guess I don't like them after all. But anyway, we're gonna take our masher and mash this until it's as smooth or as chunky as we want. Personally, I don't like mine too smooth. I definitely wanna keep a relatively chunky texture. So I'm gonna stop right about here, which for me is perfect. And then once we've determined that's been mashed to perfection, 
We are pretty much ready to serve, but you have to taste this. It almost always needs another pinch of salt and quite possibly a little more acidity. Oh, and if you're wondering about cayenne, no. Classic guacamole does not have any cayenne in it. So please do not, when no one's looking, sneak in a couple shakes of cayenne. So anyway, we're going to taste and adjust those seasonings. And once that's mixed up, you can go ahead and chill that in the fridge or transfer it into a nicer bowl and serve it up. And I guess garnish the top a little chopped cilantro, which is completely unnecessary, but I saw a little bit on the cutting board, so I tossed it down. And of course, make sure you have some chips around. And check it out, I poured a whole bag of chips into that basket and not one single visible broken chip. Unbelievable. But anyway, that's it. Our classic, traditional, completely authentic guacamole is ready to enjoy. So let me grab a chip and go in and see how I did. And this stuff really is magnificent, which has very little to do with us. It's really the magic of the avocado. Okay, properly seasoned, there are a few things as uniquely delicious. And not to mention one of the world's healthiest foods. Avocado is one of the original superfoods and so healthy for you, it will completely counteract the negative effects of the chips and the six pack of beer I'm gonna drink with this. And while I've never had that theory verified by a medical professional, it sounds right. And apparently in this day and age, that's really all that counts. So anyway, that's it, guacamole. Like I said, we're doing this to honor National Guacamole Day. And what better way to celebrate a fake holiday than with a real great dip? So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.